What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23, coming to you today with a video about Destiny, and today I'm actually going to be going over uh, my own personal top 10 reasons for why I am not pre-ordering the Taken King, and for why I am still skeptical about the Taken King expansion coming for Destiny. Uh, this will probably be the last Destiny video I do for a while, uh, until the stream they have next week. Of course, I'll do a stream commentary after they're done next Wednesday. Uh, unless they announce anything, any other thing that's stupid or noteworthy. Uh, probably gonna take a break from doing Destiny videos for a while, because I know there's a lot of people that are probably just tired of hearing all the Destiny stuff, and want some other things, but I got some Mass Effect videos I'm working on that I'll get put up here hopefully this weekend, but I just wanted to take some time out to do... Uh, this video to kind of share some of my own personal views on the Taken King and why I'm still, as I've said a couple times, very skeptical. I know a lot of people are kind of kind of weirded out because my Taken King videos so far have seemed kind of optimistic, and they people I guess think I'm going back on the Bungie hype train, but that's definitely not the case. So uh, obviously, Taken King is getting a ton of hype, just uh, a lot of hype, and I'm, I'm getting a little tired of it. I did do a video titled "Why You Should Be Skeptical of the Hype." You guys can check that out if you want. But I wanted to go over my 10 reasons that I actually came up with uh, for why I'm skeptical about the Taken King and for why I'm definitely not going to pre-order the Taken King. And the first reason is pretty obvious. Uh, we've already been burned three times by Bungie and by the hype department. Uh, I tell you what, the guys who make the hype videos for these uh, Bungie expansions, they should really start working on designing the game. Because, man, they make this game seem so epic. Uh, they put together their little trailers and things, uh, like the one they just did for the VIP rewards. It makes everything seem so awesome and amazing and epic in the game, and it's just really funny. And I think those guys, they, they should they should start designing some of the actual encounters in the game. Maybe then we'd get, we'd get some uh, a better experience. But uh, we had a major hype train for Destiny when the game first came out. Um, last year in September. Uh, it was hyped up at E3. We heard about how this game was going to be so amazing. And of course, many of us know it was not not what was promised in terms of the actual content within the game. Uh, the game really did not turn out to be that great. It released a very lackluster reviews from most of the major gaming outlets and most of the major reviewers who are giving an unbiased opinion. Uh, you know, we heard all the stuff from Bungie about how they heard all of, all of our player complaints about how there was no story in Destiny, how they were going to change all that with the quest system in Dark Below. And of course, they put out all these epic trailers and hyped up Dark Below through the ceiling and made us all think Dark Below was going to be amazing. And at the time, most of us were kind of trapped in it already because we bought the expansion pass. Uh, so we were going to get Dark Below and House of Wolves regardless. Uh, but of course, we all know that Dark Below came out in released to, again, very lackluster reviews. There wasn't a whole lot of content to do. Uh, the story was still non-existent. The quest system was kind of a joke. It was just, you know, Bungie. I don't know what they were thinking with that. Uh, but it really didn't change much for the original game. It didn't add a whole lot of content to the game. And most people were very not, not uh, you know, most people who look at, look at Destiny from an unbiased perspective were not too thrilled with the Dark Below. Well, then, of course, we got House of Wolves, and House of Wolves had a huge hype campaign. They did all the reveal streams for House of Wolves. They tried to show off all the new items and armor and reforging and all this stuff, and they, they showed you all the shiny new objects first, and then they, to kind of pull the wool over your eyes, and then House of Wolves came, came out, and, uh, you know, Prison of Elders was, was kind of cool for about two weeks, and then it got really super boring at first. Uh, same thing with Trials of Osiris, you know, it was kind of a neat game mode and then all the lag switchers and the cheaters and the network manipulators on PlayStation 4 started getting a hold of it. Uh, people started carrying people through Trials of Osiris and so very quickly the accomplishments that you got in Trials of Osiris uh, really just didn't feel all that great after a while because it's like anybody now can kind of go through there. There's even people that are charging money to take you through Trials of Osiris. Uh, it's pretty pretty crazy, but either way, House of Wolves was a very lackluster expansion pack, in my own personal opinion, and I, I know a lot of people share that sentiment. So, again, we had the same thing happen three times, basically, all through last year, where they hyped this game, you know, just so much, and it came out, it, there was no way they could ever deliver on that hype, and they failed to deliver on that hype last year. So, once again, Taken King is being hyped through the ceiling, and we're supposed to sit here and, and, and believe in it again. You know, this would be the fourth time. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fall for it, guys, and hopefully a lot of you won't either. And that brings me to another point uh, that's gonna be part of this first, uh, the first reason. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny how Game Informer is the only major gaming media outlet that's gotten early access to the Taken King. 
And of course, they are doing everything they can to hype hype up Taken King. I mean, if you've read all their reviews, all the information they put out about it, uh, you'd think Taken King is going to be the greatest video game ever made. They have yet to say that you know one little criticism about it at all. They, they're just pointing out all kinds of positive information on it, which which is okay, I guess. But at the same time, you're telling me that you've had all this access to the new expansion, you've gotten to play all the new features and do everything and see everything, and there's not even one thing that might be a sore point. There's not one thing you're even the least bit concerned about. I just find that to be a little odd. And again, like I said, it's pretty funny that they're the only gaming uh, media that's gotten access to this. None of the media outlets, you know, Forbes, you know, GameSpot, none of the other, Kotaku, none of those other groups have gotten any access to Taken King besides Game Informer. And I find that interesting because Game Informer, if you guys didn't know, uh, Game Informer is owned by GameStop, who has a very vested interest in selling copies of Destiny. Destiny, of course, despite its shortcomings and things, it's still a very uh, popular game. It's got a very healthy population. And GameStop stands to make a lot of money from sales of Taken King and pre-orders of Taken King and everything else. So, of course, they would have a vested interest in having Game Informer uh, do all their early coverage of Taken King and give them absolutely amazing, glowing reviews. There, there's no coincidence. You know, I, I don't believe there's... That, that's, it's not a coincidence at all that Game Informer is doing the early, the early access stuff and they have absolutely no concerns at all about the Taken King. Because... Honestly, the way I look at it, they're trying to obviously they're going to try to sell more copies of the game because GameStop stands to make a lot of money if Destiny Taken King does well in terms of pre-orders and initial sales. So that's my first reason for why I'm still skeptical. Why I'm not buying into the hype for the Taken King. Uh, reason number two is the game just feels like a constant, like it's in a constant test phase. Uh, you're one to me. I did a big video on this, like, and I said, you know, some people agree, some don't, and that's okay. You know, you're, you can have your opinion. Uh, but it just felt like a year-long beta test. Uh, it just seems like they don't, you know, they just couldn't figure out what they wanted to do with the game. They kept making all these different changes. They can't make up their mind about what they want to do with weapons and, and other things. You know, it's just they just constantly mess with everything. They constantly change the systems in the game. And it's just, uh, you know, I don't know if year two is going to be any different. It just seems like we keep on getting the same problem with this game, where it's like Bungie will do something and they'll take it back, and then they still don't know what they want to do with the game. It's just very confusing how they go about this and how they just seem to not have any idea what they want to do with this game. It's like I said, a constant beta, constant, you know, it just feels like they are constantly changing things. And that's a short point for number two, but it's going to lead into my third point. Uh, my third reason, and that is this game really still does not have an identity. We don't know what, what the game is, what they want to do with it. It's... Is it an RPG? Is it an MMO? Is it a first-person shooter? I mean, it does a few different things from all of those genres. I personally don't think it's an MMO. It's not even close to being an MMO with the type of content and the lack of basic features. But it's like they the game just kind of exists in this weird place that doesn't it doesn't have an identity, and they don't know what they want to do with it. And I think that's one of the reasons they keep making all these baffling changes with the game, it's like every new expansion just completely changes what was already in the game and what was already going on, revamps all the systems, changes all the currency, and just, they just, oh, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to be like they know what they're doing, you know, like they know what they want to make this game. And at, at the point, it's like, you know, is, is Bungie just that inept at this, or are they just messing with us, or what are they doing? I, I really just don't understand it. How they can be just so crazy when they keep making all these major changes with every single expansion and really what's to you know how is that going to be any different in year two you know that they said i mean you go back to year one they said that all your legendaries and all your stuff was going to be you couldn't bring it forward with dark below uh everybody went and deleted most people deleted all their vault of glass gear and all their other stuff and then all of a sudden magically in house of wolves they say oh sorry guys you can now ascend your old stuff and you know all you people that Got rid of it, oh, sucks to be you, you know, and it's like all those good weapons from Vanilla Destiny, if you were lucky enough to keep any of those, uh, then you were actually able to bring those forward. And now they're going back with the Taken King, and it's like, oh no, you can't bring any of that stuff with you, you can't use any of your old gear. Uh, the exotics are going to be whatever we decide we want to bring up that you can use. So again, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of the decisions they make, and it's just going to continue to happen each expansion that they put out, I feel. Like, you know, they made they made changes to the game with Dark Below. They went back on a lot of those changes and changed other things with House of Wolves. They're doing the same thing with the Taken King. 
And what happens is they don't, they are unable to maintain sort of the happy medium, if you will, uh, with the game. They just don't have the ability uh, to please the majority of the players. That's why you see a lot of stuff about Destiny where it's like half the people are upset, half the people are happy, half the people like the new changes, half the people don't like the new changes because Bungie really doesn't, they don't really know what they're trying to do and who they're trying to cater to. So it's very confusing a lot of the times um, when they put out information about the game and some of the decisions they make. You can look at the things that they're doing, uh, for example, with the, the nerfs that they're doing in Patch 2.0. They posted a couple, like a month ago, that they're changing all these weapons. They're making, they're adjusting Black Hammer and Icebreaker and Yellowhorn and Thorn, and they're making all these drastic changes to these guns and their these nerfs. And what they did was they irritated most of the player base with that. And then they turn around with Taken King, and they're basically saying, well, most of those exotics you're not going to be able to use in Taken King anyways because they're not going to have year two versions. You're not going to be able to bring your legendaries forward to use in Taken King, so. Black Hammer's not really going to be a usable weapon anymore. Icebreaker's not getting a year two version. Yellowhorn's not getting a year two version. Thorn isn't getting a year two version. So it's like, what was the point of making those changes in the first place and basically upsetting the community for no reason? Because there's, you know, people are probably, maybe we'll use those weapons in PvP here and there, but probably not that much. So... It's just very odd. It's very baffling how this decision process for them works because you can't sit here and tell me they brought out that weapons 2.0 patch and made the patch notes and they didn't know that in Taken King, which is releasing a month after they made these announcements, that it's going to be making most of these weapons unusable and obsolete anyway. So there really was no reason for them to, to even do the nerfs. So it's just very, very confusing. And that's, and that's, you know... I don't know. So like what I said, the game really just, it needs to figure out what it wants to be. My personal opinion, if, if they really want Destiny to be what they've advertised, you know, what they advertise at E3 and what they continue to try to advertise it as, they really just need to give creative control of this game over to Blizzard. Um, if you guys don't know, Blizzard is another division of Activision. They run World of Warcraft. And Bungie's starting to borrow a few things from the World of Warcraft but I, th I think they'd be better off at this point letting letting Blizzard just run this game and then Bungie can go and make a true first-person shooter, uh, which is what they're good at. Of course, at this point, I don't even know if they'd still be able to do that, given how, how the inept ineptness they've shown with Destiny. I'm, I'm starting to think most of the people who are responsible for Halo stayed behind with 343 or have moved on and are working in other areas on other projects. So, so yeah, sorry to get kind of long-winded on that one, but yeah, part uh, point number three is this game just lacks an identity. And as long as it lacks an identity, I think they're going to have constant problems trying to appeal to the wide range of players with the game. So that is point number three. Now, reason number four, why I'm still skeptical of the Taken King and not pre-ordering the Taken King is we honestly have no clue how much new content is actually going to be in the Taken King. Now, of course, they've told us there's new PvP maps, and there's new strikes, and there's old reskin strikes. And you're going to get a new raid, and you're going to have what they're calling eight um, you know, epic story campaign missions with the Taken King, and then this whole Taken War quest line is going to start, uh, which is probably just going to involve you patrolling the Dreadnought and everything. It's not going to really... I don't think it involves a whole lot of new content. Uh, but the thing is, you know, I've been watching, and they're, they're really... Um, talking up this new questing system but a lot of the questing system what people don't seem to understand that's just going to be older content sort of bundled and recycled and put into a quest form instead of having to do all these stupid patrols and and daily missions and you know go kill sardok shrine of oryx you know on heroic and all that stuff instead they're going to kind of package all that junk into quests and you're going to get some you know some gear and some rewards for that uh but I think, it's again, it's just going to be recycling old content that's already in the game. You're going to be going to the same places. You're going to be going to the Cosmodrome over and over. You're going to be going to the moon over and over again. There's not going to be any new areas added to any of these the current zones in the game. The only new area that's being added and confirmed is going to be Oryx's Dreadnought, which, of course, is a patrol zone where you can't even use your Sparrow. And I know some, you know, the articles in Game Informer are saying it's been done that way purposely because there's too many chasms and places you could fall and... I think that's um, not not exactly completely true. I think one of the things is they probably did not create a very big zone and they're not allowing you to use your Sparrow so that it seems like it takes you longer to get places and it will artificially make the Dreadnought uh, seem bigger than it really is. So I think that's one of the tactics they're using. Again, that's not, you know, that's not fact. That's just my speculation. I think that's what's really going to happen here. And that's my main worry is that we're just, we're not really 
going to be getting a ton of content when this comes out and it might just turn out to be like all the other expansions where it's like Taken King comes out and people are done with all the content in about two weeks and then it's kind of like well, what now now we have to wait for the next expansion and that's been the big problem with this game uh, throughout just a lack of meaningful content to play and, and not having the game become an endless grind fest over and over again which a lot of people are really starting to get tired of so that's going to be interesting to see what actually comes out with the Taken King. That's one of the big reasons I'm waiting before I even think about possibly picking up the Taken King. Uh, because you just don't know. You have no idea exactly what new content is going to be there. And you can't really, you know, I don't think you can make a decision on the game until you know for sure exactly what's going to be there. If this is going to be just another limited expansion digital, you know, li limited expansion, uh, sorry. <laughs> Just another limited content, uh, you know, digital expansion where it's like you have the same amount of stuff to do as you got in House of Wolves and Dark Below. And really, in the end of the day, 90% of the game is just repackaged and recycled content that you're doing over and over and over again. So I hope that isn't the case, but that definitely could be the case. All right, moving on to reason number five for why I am still skeptical and not pre-ordering the Taking King. Reason number five is that... Despite what Bungie is talking about with the light level, the light level is still going to play a huge role in the game and what you can actually do in terms of the content you can play. That was a lot of the problems with oh, Destiny in Year One. A lot of people had a lot of complaints where, you know, it take, take, took you forever to get to level 30 or level 32 or level 34. And a lot of the end game content is, of course, used to be basically locked out per your level. Um, there's a lot of elitism on looking for group if you're not max level, if you're not, you know, 34 or whatever it is. And so Bungie obviously is doing away with that because you can now just get to level 40 uh, by playing the game normally, killing monsters, doing all that fun stuff. Everybody can be level 40 now, which I, I actually think that's a really good change. But at the same time, I'm kind of skeptical of how that's going to work because of the way they've redone the light system where it's now going to be light level is across all your weapons and gear and is going to determine, as they've said uh, in their streams and things, light level will determine kind of what, it's a guideline for what content you can actually play in the game, whether it strikes or the raid or whatever happens. So light level is still going to be a very big part of this game. And people are going to start now, instead of saying, oh, you have to have Yallerhorn to play on looking for group, they're going to start saying, oh, you have to be light level 312 or light level 355 or whatever the maximum or whatever high end game light level is going to be. And if you don't have all the, the right gear and you can't get your light level that high, it's still, I think you're still going to run into a lot of the same issues where a lot of the end game content is still going to be kind of walled off until you are able to, uh, to somehow get that gear and get your light level high enough to participate. Uh, so I still think there's going to be a huge, there's going to be a grind uh, with all that involved. I don't think, you know, they're talking about how they're trying to streamline all that, get rid of it, but uh, they're not going to just give you all the good light level uh, gear just for getting to level 40 and just from running normal stuff in the game. You're going to still have to grind the raid. You're going to still have to grind in game strikes and content to get to, to get to get it. So it's really not going to be much different than how the game works now. It's just that everyone's going to be able to, to get to level 40 and you won't have that, oh, I'm level 34 and you're level 30 elitism crap happening anymore. Now that'll just be moved over to whatever your light level happens to be. So that is the one thing I'm kind of concerned with with the light level. Despite the fact that I do think it's kind of a good idea that they're going to just having it where everybody can get to level 40. So light level is still going to play a massive role in the game. Don't think any different. Don't think it's not going to. It still will. So that's number five. Now moving on to point number six. This is one of my big gripes I've had really since day one with Destiny. And uh, especially since this is supposed to be a social game, it's supposed to have that kind of, even though it's not an MMO, it's supposed to have the social aspects of an MMO. This game has literally zero social tools within it, besides being able to wave and point and do the stupid emotes and dances and things. Um, this game, for being as big a social game as Bungie says it is, there's no social features in this game. There's no ability to have a local zone chat or chat in the tower or chat with anybody um, around the area. You know, unless, of course, you're in a fire team with your voice enabled and all that stuff and using your mic. Uh, there's no... Where there's no area in the game for people to meet up to do activities. Obviously, there's no matchmaking for any of the high-end in-game content, and that's something I've uh, been doing a lot of videos on. I think, as I've said many times in the past, optional matchmaking would only help this game get better. Um, it would open up the game and a lot of the content to so many more people in the community who want to play it, but for whatever reason, they're just having problems, whether it's struggling, finding a good group on looking for group or whatever it is. 
you know, the game doesn't have the matchmaking. It doesn't have any of the social tools. Uh, if you go to the tower, there needs to be like an area in the tower where you can actually meet up with people who want to do raids and, and, you know, like kind of like a little bounty board area or somewhere people can get together and just, just basically have a social area. You know, the tower is not a social area. First of all, you can only fit like 10 people in it or 12 people or however many it is. It's kind of a joke. Um, you know, it's supposed to be a hub city for the game. There should be... Why is it we can only get 12 people on the tower? Why can't we have like 50 and everybody can meet up and everybody should be able to communicate and talk and chat? And there's just really, there's just no social functions in this supposedly social game. And Bungie, of course, for whatever reason, they don't seem to want to address this. They don't want to embrace their community like they did with the Halo games. All of the outside looking for group stuff that's gone on with Destiny, all of the ways to meet up with new people in the game... Uh, you know, unfortunately, you have to go outside the game to get to them, but none of them were actually put in place by Bungie. Most of them were done by outside third parties who just wanted to find a way to get more people uh, together to play the game. So Bungie, for some really odd reason with this game, they have not really embraced the community, uh, with the exception of the streamers and YouTubers who pretty much, you know, uh, pump Bungie's tires all the time. And that's a point I'm going to get into here in a minute. But they really have not embraced the actual, just the regular community, the way they did with Halo. And the way they, I mean, as someone who played Halo from Combat Evolved all the way through its run with uh, with uh, Halo 3 and Reach with Bungie, even, you know, obviously Halo 4, 343 is a newer game and a newer company. But Bungie did such an amazing job with the community in Halo. I mean, they gave the community all these tools to use to, to just make it this huge social experience. Uh, they, they just really embraced their community with Halo and made it a great experience for everybody. That is definitely not the case with Destiny. So I still think the game is going to suffer quite a bit until it gets some of these social tools in the game that it's currently lacking. And for some odd reason, uh, they just seem to be ignoring that over and over and over again. So that's point number six I wanted to make. And number seven, I'm going to touch on something I did just mention, which in regards to the community a little bit. Um, number seven, <laughs> I'm going to say this would be kind of funny. Um, I've been playing a little bit of Mass Effect lately, so forgive me for the terminology, but number seven is the indoctrinated Destiny community. <laughs> and I say indoctrinated because this is one of the oddest gaming communities I think I've ever seen before. Uh, number one, it's just, there's very few, uh, there's just, I, I guess it's just hard to be on one side of things with Destiny. It's, in Destiny, it's like you either hate it or you love it. There's like no in-between, which... I kind of consider myself to be one of those people that's in between, though I am fairly critical of the game. It's only, you know, honestly, I've tried to explain this many times. Nobody seems to get it, but I'm I'm critical of this game mainly because I want this game to be what was shown to us in 2013. I want this game to be this amazing, epic sci-fi RPG, whatever, you know, experience that they kind of sold us on and has yet to live up to in any shape or form. And that's one of the reasons I'm very critical is I want to see changes made to the game. I want to see the game improved and made better. Um, but if you, it seems to be the community, if you're like that, the community kind of treats you as a pariah and they act like you're just some disgruntled person who hates Destiny and they tell you all these things like you should deserve, you deserve to die and your house should burn down and all this other stuff. And uh, the, the community in this game really just drives me nuts because it's like if you don't like Destiny, it's like you can't be part of the community in their in their mind. Um, nine, you know, I'd, I would say 90% of the people I've come across with the Destiny community just like they're just these mindless sheep and they just think this game is amazing and they think Bungie can do no wrong and Activision can do no wrong and they're completely indoctrinated by these corporations and, and everything that Bungie says is gospel and they, everybody gets so hyped up about these new releases. It's, it's just amazing how this community operates. And like I said, you know, the one thing is if you don't like Destiny or if you have criticisms of Destiny, these people flock to your videos, they flock to your forum posts when you're trying to make constructive criticism. And they tell you to go, they tell you to go screw yourself. They tell you to quit playing the game. They tell you to leave it alone. They tell, they tell you, you know, all kinds of, you know, I've had some really interesting private messages from this so-called amazing community um, that I won't share here because they're a little too vulgar, but... That, that is the kind of just the weird thing about this community. And then also the other problem I have with the Destiny community is that so many of the people who could be vocal and help with getting changes put across in this game really aren't. Um, and I'm talking about the Twitch streamers, the big YouTube communities that exist around Destiny. Okay, um, the gaming, you know, a lot of the gaming magazines have started to at least be a little bit more critical of this game, but a lot of them still kind of pump Destiny up, and of course, you know, they're, they're, some of those magazines are tied in with game sales, so they of course want to, you know, get something with that, but 
you know, there's so many big YouTubers, there's so many big Twitch streamers, and again, they just continue to pump Bungie's tires, they continue to try to, to be all, you know, they just, I don't know what it is, like, now, I will say one thing, I have noticed several, a couple of different YouTubers, I'm not going to name anybody, because I'm not that kind of person, I don't call anybody out, it's just not, it's not worth it, it's not worth the drama, um, but there are a couple of, of Destiny YouTubers who have started to become a little bit more objective in their coverage of the game. Uh, which is a good thing, but at the same time, they still they still mostly just go over safe topics. Uh, because obviously, they have a vested interest in the game. You know, if you're running a gaming channel based only on one game, you're not going to be overly critical of it. I mean, you might offer some criticism, but you're not going to point out some of the major flaws and some of the things that the company doesn't want you to talk about. Uh, because your livelihood is completely tied into that game. And I know you'll hear the Destiny YouTubers say that, oh, we're not paid by Activision and... We're not paid by Bungie and all that, but they're they're paid from YouTube. And so if they start making unpopular videos on YouTube about the game they're covering, if they start pointing out flaws in the game that, like I said, the Destiny community is pretty indoctrinated with Bungie and Activision. They don't like to hear criticism of the game. So if you're a big YouTuber and you cover Destiny and all of a sudden you start to make some critical points about it, you're probably going to lose some subscribers. You're probably going to lose some popularity and lose some views. And, and Bungie is probably going to not allow you to have much access to the game like they've been doing for a lot of the YouTubers where they fly them out to Seattle and they get to see all the stuff early. Uh, they've shown with a couple of YouTubers I know of where when those YouTubers were critical of the game, Bungie kind of cut them off. Call of Duty didn't Activision. Activision does the same thing with Call of Duty. Um, you know, if you're if you're one of the people they like and you talk good about the game and get them more sales and more players, then they let you have early access and things like that. So, you know, Activision is not paying these people, but a lot of them do get benefits from uh, being more positive about the game. So that's just something, you know. And this is a community I've, I've never really seen a community that's been just, just like this, where it's like the people who have the biggest voice and could help the most, most of them just kind of sit back and don't do anything. So... That's one thing, and I think that's something that's it's going to hurt Destiny in the long run because people in this game are just they're just so willing to accept mediocrity. They're so willing to just be sheep and accept whatever Bungie says is, is 100% truth and fact and continue to let Bungie and Activision screw them over with this game at times and pull the wool over their eyes. It's just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. So I really wish, uh, wish this community would wake up a little bit and be a little bit more unbiased when it comes to talking about the game. So that's point number seven, the indoctrinated Destiny community. Uh, just a, a factor I really don't like about this game. All right, moving on to f part number eight, or item number eight, of why I'm skeptical about the Taken King, why I'm not pre-ordering the Taken King, is that I feel like the PvP in Destiny is still going to be an absolute disaster. And that's one of the few things that kept me playing this game for a while, even after I became disillusioned with it, uh, was the PvP was, was really fun. It used to be, anyways. Uh, the Crucible was, was a lot of fun in Destiny. Uh, but of course, after some balance changes and things, they, they nerfed all the auto rifles. They brought about this whole thing where Thorn is like the only weapon you can use and all this other stuff. And the PvP has become an absolute mess in this game. It's one of the few games where, to me, the PvP has gone... It was actually better in the beta form of the game and has just gotten worse over time. I, I don't understand that whatsoever. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But the PvP in this game right now is an absolute unbalanced mess. There's tons of lag. Uh, there's lots of lag switchers. There's people that cheat and manipulate their uh, their network. There's a lot of stuff that Bungie kind of just lets go on, and it doesn't appear that they're really interested in fixing it. Uh, the map designs are pretty... There's some good map designs, but for the most part, the map designs in this game are small. They promote shotguns. They promote close quarters gameplay. And they are giving us eight new maps with the Taken King, but right now, from what I've seen on those maps, it's going to be more of the same. The maps are very small. There's no uh, long sight lines that would favor different weapons like the auto rifles and scout rifles and snipers and things like that. And you basically are going to have the same exact problem. A few of the Taken King PvP maps are even being advertised as being uh, close quarters and chaotic. So it, regardless of the weapon balance it changes Bungie makes and the other things they do, their map design is going to continue to promote this whole shotgun mess we've seen in PvP, even though they are adjusting shotguns a bit. It's not going to do much to change, because the problem with Destiny is the PvP maps. It's not it's not the, the weapon balance and things like that. It's that everybody is encouraged and kind of forced to use the same weapons if they want to compete. And shotguns are the biggest problem, because all the weapons are very small. Fusion rifles are not very good. Sniper rifles are only good for long sight lines. 
and so you are pretty much forced to use a shotgun if you want to compete in close quarters and most of the maps are going to be the same thing again so i don't really have much hope for the pvp quality improving in this game which really is kind of disappointing because i really did enjoy crucible when this game first came out i really enjoyed playing the crucible and Iron Banner and everything else, up until about the last two months. It's it's just become an absolute nightmare and a very frustrating experience trying to play uh, PvP in this game. And it's just, I don't know, just really aggravating. It doesn't seem like they want to do anything about the servers or the lag or the constant problems with the network they have. Um, the lag in this game is approaching Call of Duty levels of terrible, uh, quite honestly, in my opinion. And it doesn't seem to be something they're really all that interested in fixing. So... Until, you know, unfortunately, until they actually put more effort into the PvP side of this game, that's something I think is going to continue to suffer. And uh, one of the major baffling things with PvP in this game with me has always been the complete lack of game modes. And I know we're getting a few new game modes with the Taken King, but they're just basically recycled versions of what we have now. You know, there's going to be a version of Control where kills don't count to try to force people to be more objective. But again, that's just Control with the kills removed. Uh, it's not anything new. Um, you know, they're doing this whole Rift thing, which is basically a capture the flag type game mode. Um, that's something that's standard that ships with most other shooters with their PvP when the game comes out. Uh, so again, a very basic game mode they're now going to make you pay for an expansion pack to get, which really makes no sense to me. And then they're putting in this Mayhem mode, which basically is going to be regular PvP, but your supers and all your abilities recharge really fast. Okay, that, that really took them a whole lot of brain power to come up with. Uh, that's something they could have very easily put into the game as it stands right now. So again, just nothing new with PvP. There's a, an amazing lack of game modes. And one of the areas they have in PvP that they can really expand upon is combined arms, which is where you obviously get to use vehicles. And they have much bigger maps that favor some different weapons. And I actually really enjoy the combined arms playlist because you get to play on these much larger maps. There's only three of them. Uh, but they're much bigger. They encourage the use of different weapons like pulse rifles and scout rifles and snipers if you can find a good area. And the combined arms maps in this game really remind me a little bit of how PvP was enjoyable back when Bungie did Halo. Uh, plus you have the vehicle element added in, you've got turrets, you've got all kinds of fun stuff. And combined arms is actually the only one of the few areas of PvP I still enjoy playing because of the fact you get more weapon variety, you get more people using snipers and getting to enjoy a little bit better PvP experience. Well, Bungie actually has come out and said they're not going to focus on combined arms at all, any, like at least for right now. They said they really don't have any future plans for combined arms. It's something uh, they've thought about, but they really don't know what they're going to do at this time. Uh, they're probably going to be phasing those maps out of the rotation, which I think is a huge mistake. And I think if they don't do anything else with combined arms, it's going to be another, uh, just another mistake by them. Uh, like I said, that's, that, that has the potential to be a very, very good uh, player versus player mode, but they're ignoring it. Uh, maybe because it's too difficult to come up with new content for it. I don't know. Um, maybe it costs them too much money to have to develop new content. I, I don't know. It just, it, it just, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it makes no sense. It's another one of those decisions they make where it's like, did you guys actually think about this for a second? Or maybe talk to anyone in the community before you thought about doing this. Uh, so, lots of really odd, baffling decisions with PvP, and I don't think the PvP experience in this game is going to get that much better. So that's reason number nine. Or, I'm sorry, that's reason number eight. <laughs> now, reason number nine. I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, reason number nine is that Destiny has just become an absolute, complete money pit. Um, for anybody that wants to continue to enjoy the game, it just, it's going to require the constant investment of money and time that I don't think is worth it in the, in the long run. So you have, uh, let's see, let's see, you have Vanilla Destiny, which was $60, and most of us spent $100 because uh, we bought the game and we bought uh, the expansion pass, we get House of Wolves and everything else with it. So, uh, you know, you're out 100 bucks pretty much. Year one was largely a lackluster experience. Um, they're making a lot of massive changes in year two that basically are making all the year one stuff you did completely irrelevant. Uh, and you're going to have to spend another $40 to pick up the Taken King, or at the very minimum. You know, a lot of people are spending 60 to get the Legendary. A lot of people are pay paying 80 to get the Collector's Edition because they want all the little goodies. Um, so you're looking at Destiny as a game that's been out for a year. You've already spent between $140 to $180 on it, depending on what version you've had and what you've done with the DLC and all the other stuff. So, uh... That's a lot of money to spend on a game for a year. 
Now, I've, I used to play Call of Duty quite a bit, and I know how much Call of Duty costs with the DLC and the map packs and all the other junk. I don't remember ever spending close to $200 on a Call of Duty game to get the entire full experience. So think of, you know, I play a lot of MMOs as well, and I don't have to spend a lot of money to get the entire full experience. Now think about this with Destiny. Okay, we got the Taken King that's going to come out. So at this point, you got to pick up another expansion. They have two more expansions planned for year two. Uh, there's going to be a Vex expansion. There's going to be a Cabal expansion. It's in the contract with, with Activision. It was leaked uh, last year. And so those that's probably going to be $20 a piece or another $40 DLC package. So you're, you're buying the Taken King to start off year two. You're not even getting the full amount of year two content. You're going to have to buy two more DLC packs to get the full year two content, which is going to be another 40 bucks. So at the end of Destiny's two, uh, Destiny 1, which there, you know there's going to be a Destiny 2 and probably a Destiny 3 and God knows what else they do with this game. You're going to have spent anywhere between, oh, I don't know, 180 and 220 dollars for this for the game in its earliest you know in its its first iteration and then they're going to do the same thing with destiny 2. this game is going to be a constant money trap i mean i have been a part of many mmos i've like i said i used to play call of duty i've never had to spend almost 200 dollars on one single game in order to get all of its full experience so that's that's another thing i think is still going to be a problem with destiny and i believe at some point activision will implement microtransactions into this game I think they, uh, on you know, they've got the the fan base for it. The people I think with Destiny would eat that stuff up because that's your typical Destiny player just seems to eat up everything Activision and Bungie throw at them. Uh, and it's in their contract as well. Their contract with Activision and Bungie, uh, they basically have said in there, you know, we can add in microtransactions in this game whenever we want to. So I think you might see it at some point. I think the twenty dollar cosmetic DLC they did when there was such a uproar about the collector's edition. I think that was just a, a test to see if anybody would go for it. If anybody's buying that $20 collector item DLC, they're probably going to wind up, you know, okay, doing more microtransactions in the future. So this game just, I think it's a giant money trap. And unless the Taken King comes out and shows that they're actually putting a ton of meaningful content into it finally, I think that trend is just going to continue. And this is Activision we're talking about. We know what they do with Call of Duty. It's like you buy the base game and then they charge you out the nose for DLC for these really silly little map packs that don't add much to the actual game. Uh, Destiny is unfortunately kind of going into that same boat now with, uh, with just the amount of money you have to continually spend on this game. So that's number nine. Now moving on to my final number 10, my 10th reason for why I'm still skeptical why I'm not going to be pre-ordering the Taken King. Um, it's just the fact that we have a lot of good-looking games that are finally going to be coming out. You know, 2015 finally seems to be the year that we're going to get some decent titles for next-gen. Uh, there's a lot of games coming out towards the holiday season and right after Taken King comes out. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, I would rather spend my money on a new experience, on a new game that looks decent, than, you know, paying money to get Taken King and then having taking the risk that it's going to be, wind up being the same thing as House of Wolves and Dark Below. Uh, that's that's a big reason. I mean, there's just some games, you know, you got uh, Halo 5 is coming in October, which is a game I'm really looking forward to. I think um, I'm not pre-ordering Halo 5. I'm going to wait and see if it's everything 343 is promised because I'm just, I'm done pre-ordering games at this point. Uh, but Halo 5 so far looks like it's going to be pretty decent. The Warzone mode looks really fun and interesting. It looks like 343 is trying to get back to some of the older Halo PvP after they screwed it up so bad in Halo 4. Uh, plus 343 knows they really have to hit Halo 5 out of the park after all the problems they've had with Halo 4 with the community and also with the Master Chief Collection being almost a complete flop um, in terms of its release. So, you know, they, they definitely are trying to make amends with the community. I think they're going to put out a good game because of that. Uh, Fallout 4 looks really good. That's coming out pretty soon. You've got Star Wars Battlefront, which looks really good, and I think that's going to appeal to a lot of shooter fans, especially if you're a big Star Wars fan or if you play Call of Duty or Battlefield. Um, you've got Black Ops 3, which I've been watching the beta, and it doesn't really look like it's going to be anything innovative or new. And again, that's typical Activision. It looks like they're just recycling uh, Call of Duty yet again in another iteration of it. So um, I don't know if Black Ops 3 will really hurt Destiny's population at all or be something that draws a lot of gamers away. But it's still, it's a new Call of Duty title, and those seem to still do well every single year, despite Call of Duty's refusal to add any innovation to their games. It's the same thing. Every, every single year, every two years, whenever they release a Call of Duty, uh, it's the exact same thing, but still, I think that's a game that some people will definitely want to try out and play. 
And finally for me is just, uh, hopefully they're going to announce a release date soon, is going to be No Man's Sky. I am so looking forward to that game, and I think a lot of other people are as well. I uh, just cannot wait to pick that up and go explore all over the galaxy and the universe. And I think that game is going to be right up my alley. And that's a game I'm really looking forward to. They've said they probably are going to release it 2015. I wish they'd really give us a release date, though. So so that's my 10th reason, is there's just going to be a lot of different games coming out after, you know, right around the Taken King releases and after the Taken King comes out. Uh, you know, they're finally going to have some competition. That's one of the things about Destiny. It's kind of existed in this interesting area where they just have yet to have really any competition, especially from the next gen. Um with this game you know they released it before all the big releases in 2014 most of those turned out to be flops uh, and so destiny really had no competition for its player base most of the really good games for 2014 were kind of these niche games that not a lot of people uh not a huge population plays uh so they were kind of kind of lucky in that in that respect but i think you're finally going to see them having to uh having to uh finally put some work into destiny if they want to keep it on in its current position where they've got so many people playing the game as I get stuck <laughs> this area up here. I don't know what's going on. That is probably a good place to end the video. Anyways, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed my 10 reasons why I'm not pre-ordering Taken King and why I'm still skeptical of the Taken King. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, if, if you're going to buy the game right off the bat, let me know why you're so excited and why you think Bungie's going to do such a good job. And if you're in my boat where you're still skeptical of the Taken King, uh, let me know what your reasons are. Let me know why you're still, uh, still hesitant to uh, jump back on the Destiny hype train. Anyways, guys, I hope you're having a great day. It is Friday, so we are jumping into the weekend here. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.